Coming up on today's Locked On Senators, with so much drama in the OTT, it's kind of hard being L-O-S-P, but Snoop Dogg has done an exclusive interview with Ian Mendez. We now know more about his thoughts of potentially being a part owner of the Ottawa Senators. And a bit of an unusual guest for us as we have a Habs fan on, but the key is they are a Leafs hater. It's Danny. You may have seen her and her father dressed in Tampa jerseys and Florida jerseys at the Leafs game. So we get the scoop on that. All that plus a former Senators fan favorite has officially hung up the skates. This is the Locked On Senators podcast. It's your team every day. Your Locked On Senators, your daily podcast on the Ottawa Senators. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. I'm Jake Sanderson, and you're listening to Locked On Senators Podcast. I'm Tim Stützle, and you're listening to the Locked On Senators Podcast. Welcome inside episode 792 of the Locked On Senators Podcast. I'm Ross Levitan on the outskirts of enemy territory in Winnipeg, Manitoba. Alongside Brandon Pillar up in the Blue Mountains, please like and subscribe wherever you download your podcast. We're also available on YouTube. Today is Thursday, May 4th, and Pillsy, we can do this Snoop Dogg thing all year long. He has so many lyrics I can play off of at the start of songs, but it really feels like he's serious now after reading what he, he said in conversation with Ian Mendez. Yeah, he's certainly doing his best to make it clear that this is not some sort of gimmick or this is not just him being attached to a group or anything like that. And it does make more sense as he gets into it, Ross. He does have quite a bit Ottawa connections. You talk about uh, the Ray Emery connection. It seemed like those two really got along well. I mean, Ray Emery uh, appeared in a rap song with Belly. Remember, Go Sends Go. So there's a little rap connection there. Uh, Snoop played Blues Fest a little while ago. He has a Carlson All-Star jersey. Like, there are definitely connections to Snoop and hockey. And he's made it clear throughout the years he's been a hockey fan. Like, he loves the LA Kings. He's uh, always talking about uh, hockey in different spots. So it certainly is interesting that Snoop is involved in this. I just, it's very weird, Ross, how basically in my mind, it seems like there's two groups left fighting for a final bid, the Nico Sparks group and the Remington group. And imagine being a part of one of the other bids. It's like, yeah, you got You better, you better get your star power up because uh, that's what's happening here. But the Sparks group is going very loud and public and, um, you know, trying to be very flashy right now. We haven't heard or seen anything from the Remington group in what seems like two weeks here. So it's and I don't really understand all of this, uh, to be perfectly honest, but it's just very funny how we have two different approaches as the kind of final hours come come in here for the bid for your Ottawa Senators. Bilzy, when you're down late in a game, you incorporate a full court press or a heavy four check. It almost feels like that type of vibe from the Nico Sparks group in yeah. the sense that not only, so let's run through the series of events. Last Wednesday, Bruce Garriock and the Ottawa Sun came out and said that the Remington group is readying a billion dollar bid to buy the team. It made headlines on Hockey Night in Canada during the playoffs. Elliot Freeman said, we should get some sort of clarity next week. Well, the week started with Ian Mendez dropping the bombshell that Snoop Dogg is attached with the Nico Sparks group. Then Tuesday, the Ottawa Business Journal puts out a very, very, like, you know, um, how should I say this, polished piece that the Andrew Abraham group, known as TAG, it's a local Ottawa company, is being hired by the Nico Sparks group to get local investors in. Oh, yeah. And then Snoop Dogg went on First Take, the number one rated sports show in America. Then we get Snoop Dogg exclusive interview on the phone with Ian Mendez. Like, am I missing anything? It feels like it is just full court press. They want to be, oh, in the Instagram post, of course, like Snoop posting it to 80 million followers that he wants to be a part of this group. So if that's not a full court press, I don't know what is. Now, why is the question I don't think anyone knows the answer to, but it is extremely, 
exciting times to be an Ottawa Senators fan. There is no wrong choice. I want to make that clear. Yeah. I'm still Ryan Reynolds, number one. I think it's also your first love is the deepest. And we knew that Ryan Reynolds was into the process from day one, maybe even day minus one. Because yep. it went on Jimmy Fallon, like, or was it? It was Jimmy Fallon, right? It was one of those late night shows. Yep, I think it was Fallon. So he goes on there in like, Early November, right when the Senators were announced for sale. I did some quick uh, math, so double-check me if you'd like. The Senators have been for sale for 178 days. The NHL's regular season is 183 days. It's a five-day gap right now. They're being thorough. I'm sure there's been a ton of ups and downs and side-by-sides all throughout this process. But this, this press really tells me that we're reaching an apex here and we could find out sooner rather than later who the next owner of the Ottawa senators are. Yeah. I mean, I really hope so. Cause as fun as this story is, there's a hockey team to be run here, Ross, and there are big decisions that need to be made. Not only Alex to not only in the crease general manager and head coach, that's kind of up in the air with new ownership too. Like there's a lot of things that need to be sorted out here and, the sooner that ownership can come in and start making their mark and start kind of getting acclimated with the city and uh, with the state of where the Ottawa centers are as a business and a hockey team, the better in my opinion. So yeah, I'm with you. I don't think like, it's not like we're saying there's a good group and a bad group here. That's not at all what we're trying to say. We're just pointing out the differences between the two groups approaches and whoever ends up winning this bid I think will have positive impact on the Ottawa centers and the city of Ottawa just in their own different ways. So I can't wait for this to be finally kind of settled so we can stop kind of speculating and waiting on updated articles and exclusive interviews to get our information. Cause I I'm fascinated by the hockey off season that this team is going to have and new ownership uh, is going to come in here and they're going to have big decisions to make right off the bat. Right away. Now, right away. Eco Sparks Group could probably make a hockey team themselves. They even have a goalie because Ian Mendez's article also uncovered that Grant Fuhrer, former yeah. NHLer, is a part of the deal. And the real deal, James Neal, former Pittsburgh Penguin, who absolutely torched the Ottawa Senators. Sends killer. In 2013, I think he had seven goals and 10 points in five games. That series, he was absolutely ridiculous on a line with Evgeny Malkin that second round right after Ottawa had beaten Montreal. But I'm assuming that his connection into this group is another defenseman. So, like I said, they could literally build a team here. Matthias Norlinder as well. But also, we've got Trevor Daly, who was a teammate long time with James Neal in Pittsburgh. So there's And Dallas, I think, even. They were teammates. 100%. Yeah. So, there are a ton of hockey avenues that the Nico Sparks group will have attached to them. And then if they're going to add local entrepreneurs as well, this Andrew Abraham guy uh, seems like he's in the mix. There's just so many people. And that was my initial concern. It's like how many cooks are in the kitchen type thing um, to use an analogy from when I was a cook, right? Like you, you got to have room to maneuver and room to make decisions. But either way, the senators are lucky because it seems like we have a bidding war on our hands here, Pilsy. Like the Penguins just sold last year and – it was $900 million. It was a huge, huge purchase. Decent. We didn't hear anything until it was sold. And maybe it's because we're not in the market. But this has to be the most public yep. and most drawn out ownership change, I think, ever. It has ever. Like maybe the Washington Redskins, or sorry, the Washington Football Club. Commanders. That, commanders. <laughs> New owner will change the name. I mean, it's kind of in flux. Yeah, honestly. Yeah. Uh, the one, uh, sorry, uh, did you have more there? No, but I can't think of any other teams that have taken that long or this public. Yeah, I agree. It's massive. And we did not think the Ottawa Senators would be the team that would do this. Now, have we heard anything about the Remington Group's hockey influences? Like uh, if they have kind of any hockey advisors attached to them? Because I can't think of any. We we haven't, we don't know a whole lot. Like outside of knowing that Ryan Reynolds wants to do the documentary type thing, little bits and pieces of information like that. It's been pretty hush hush. From that side of the the ledger. I'm curious if we see Bruce come out. Because I, I know that Ian and Bruce have a little healthy rivalry here in the media. It'd be kind of funny if like, if he starts uh, me- sending out the message for Remington Group. And Ian's sending out the message for the Nico Sparks Group. 
nothing against either of them. They're doing their jobs of giving us as much information about the process as possible. But this is fascinating stuff. And I will just parrot my my last point once again. I made it on Twitter last night, but God, I hope both sides are doing behind the scenes filming of this whole process. Yes. Winner gets the footage. Everybody wins. I would. Pay, how much would you pay for that documentary? I'd pay a month's locked on salary. <laughs> Woo! Um, yeah, I'll match. I'll match. All right. Hey, speaking of money, final question, because we got a lot to get to, including a Leafs hater who's making national headlines, and Mark Borowiecki's retiring. Mark Borowiecki, great career, great career. So we'll look back at that a little bit. And we also didn't even mention the Belleville Senators officially announced yes. their next head coach. So that's all coming up next. Pilsy, when the Senators finally sell, will the number start with a B or an M? Do you think this is realistically going to be the first ever NHL team that sells for a billion dollars? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Because that's I think that's why the Sparks group is making this push. Because the Remington group was like, okay. We're done messing around. Like we're we're going to a billion dollar bid here, and so if it fell short of a billion, I'd be shocked just off, off of what we've been hearing. Now, obviously, I'm not privy to the inside details. Uh, I I wasn't part of the um, the teams that paid to to get in the final mix there, but I'd be shocked if it wasn't a billion dollars after what we've heard and after, like you mentioned, the full court press these uh, groups are putting in at the final hour. I'm so, so excited to see what the conclusion is. We still believe that the next round of bidding will go in May 15th. So stay tuned here on Locked On Senators for all of the latest news updates. Five days a week, we'll get back to our Senators exit interviews. We've got a few more forwards to get to later on. But if you missed any of that, make sure to check it out recently on Locked On Senators. More coming up after a quick break. Today's episode is brought to you by our friends over at Built Bar, the protein bar that tastes like a candy bar. That's why I love Built Bar because I find I've tried other brands and, you know, I'm just forcing it down because I know it's good for me. I'm not looking forward to it. It's not a treat to be enjoyed. That's not the Built Bar way. They find out how to make their bars taste good and then how can we make this healthy? Perfect example is the Built Puffs. It's a marshmallow wrapped in chocolate, for heaven's sake. And it's still healthy for you because that's a protein-infused marshmallow. And they have so many good flavors. So after your workout, you can be excited about having a caramel brownie flavor, a coconut almond flavor, a churro flavor, Ross's favorite. There's so many. Check out Built.com and you can find all the awesome flavors there. If you haven't tried Built Bar yet, we recommend getting the Mix Box because you're probably going to like every single flavor they have and to make things even sweeter we're gonna hook you guys up with the promo code of course go to built.com use our promo code locked on 15 to get 15 percent off your next order once more guys that's built.com promo code locked on 15 for 15 percent off your next order it's built bar the protein bar that tastes like a candy bar All right, Pilsy. We'll get to our interview in just a moment. But first, stick taps are in order for David Bell, the interim, now full-time head coach of the Belleville Senators. He took over in a very strange manner with, uh, sorry, man er when Troy Mann was let go. Kind of inauspicuous. Is that a word, Pilsy? You're the word guy, so that could be word of the day. Are we ready for a word of the day? Word of the day. Inauspicuous. Not conductive to success. Unpromising. No. Doesn't nah. Work. Uh, dash one for Ross on that one. Because, Ross, David Bell, you could argue, did have success with this team. They were 14-9-3-3 over um, his record in 29 games. And you were oh, I thought you were trying to do the math on that real quick. No, no, no. I wasn't going to do that. Um, but, Ross, as, as you know, you can't spell Belleville without Bell. 
So now David Bell, sure. head, <laughs> head coach of the Belleville Senators. You're such an idiot, man. <laughs> I love it. Hey, good for him. Um, right away when he got the job, there was that, that press conference where he, he, he just seemed like it was just a different vibe. You know what I mean? Like he was kind of calling guys out a little bit, but Hey, we don't know what was going on in the room. I, I got to meet him very briefly uh, when they came to, to Winnipeg, just in the meal room um, upstairs at the press box. And it uh, just seems like a really good guy. I'm sure the players really respect him. We'll, we'll get Angus and, yes. and Igor on later this summer and we'll get them to, to give their thoughts on playing for David Bell, but seems like a player's coach seems like a hard nosed guy. And what Pierre Dorian said in the press release is the synergy was better between the NHL and AHL. Does that make you think DJ's back or really we're not going to know until new ownership anyways. There's no point in reading into it. Yeah. Cause I mean, Pierre Dorian might think that, but is Pierre Dorian going to be back either? We don't, we don't know. And that, that's not to say it's likely he won't be back. It's just when new ownership comes in, uh, it's, it's all up to them. Like they can do what, whatever, whatever they want. So I think the thing is Ross that uh, David Bell maybe doesn't have the kind of media experience that other head coaches would have. And he was thrown into that situation very unexpectedly. And it obviously he had to deal with a lot of kind of not the backlash, but the kind of aftermath of a head coach being fired like that. Like there was only, I think uh, the stat was three AHL head coaches that have been fired mid season like that ever. So it's a weird thing to happen. So I think maybe people's judgment of him on how he appeared in front of the media may not be fair just because of the circumstances he was put in. So look, I'm willing to give him a chance. Seems like the players like him. The, the management staff has faith in him. So congrats, David Bell, new head coach, third franchise head coach of the Belleville Senators. And he's been a head, he's been a coach in some capacity for 20 years, so plenty of experience. And I was able to do that quick math, Pilsy, because the same year that the Leafs last won a playoff series, there you 2004 go. was when he got his start as an assistant coach with Owen Sound. I uh, was assistant coach in Springfield in the AHL, then back to the OHL with the Barry Colts, then uh, with Sudbury, Niagara, the Ontario Reign of the AHL, and now he's going in to his sixth, sorry, fifth season now with the Belleville Sens. The fifth season. Thought that was kind of interesting. He's been with the team since 2019. So congratulations to Dave Bell. We've got a request in with footy. See if we can make that happen. He said maybe give it a week or two. So uh, expect to hear hopefully from David Bell, which would make me believe that we were not the reason why Troy Mann was fired. Remember it was like right after he came on our podcast? Well, we'll see what happens after we interview him. But Okay, okay. well, there goes that. Sorry, footy. All good. <laughs> All right, let's hit a quick break and then get into our interview with Danny. Very fun, quick interview there. And then we'll wrap up with an homage to the career of Mark Borowiecki. That's all coming up next. You're listening to Locked On Senators. All right, now let's get to our interview with Danny, the anti-Leafs fan. All right, we now welcome a very special guest. This one's for YouTube. As you can see, Danny, our guest, is rocking the same Florida Panthers reverse retro that you saw in the crowd for Game 1 at Scotiabank Arena. Danny, welcome to Locked On Senators. How are you doing today? Good. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. You obviously caught our attention. You're at the game with your dad, and everyone just thought, you know what? There's a couple Florida Panthers fans at a Leafs game. All right, nothing too crazy to see here. We know how many tickets are corporate and how they can get into anyone's hands. But then we saw a side-by-side photo of you and your dad wearing Tampa Bay Lightning jerseys in the last round. What's the thought process behind all this? How did it start and how long have you and your dad been going to, to Leaf games wearing the opposite team's jersey? Well, my dad has been doing this for over 30 years now and then it's just been in the last two years that I've been matching with him and we've been going to games in the jerseys cheering together <laughs> that's so awesome uh now I understand you and your dad are Habs fans though is is that correct that's where your true allegiance lies yeah <laughs> Now, it's not very often, Ross, that we have Habs fans on this show. But the one thing I've always maintained is Sens fans, Habs fans, hating the Leafs, that's a unity right there. So uh, we're, we're happy to have you on to discuss our hatred of the Toronto Maple Leafs. And uh, from the article I read, it mentioned that your dad has all the jerseys of other teams now, and you're almost there. 
which jerseys do you still need? I saw you you were rocking the Sens jersey, so we we like that. You already have that one figured out. But do you know offhand which jerseys you don't have yet? I know Blackhawks, Devils, which I may need if they make it to the third round. And Devils, <laughs> yep, there you go. Playing, I don't remember. It's not too many anymore. So yeah, you got to be close if that's all you can think yeah. of. And there you have uh, up on YouTube right now, the two beautiful Sens jerseys right there. Beautiful families while having a good time. What This is a, this is the question I, I've been meaning to ask ever since I saw that it's been happening with multiple jerseys. Which jersey, when you wear it, do you get the most negative responses with? I would say either Habs or yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the Florida one. The Florida one, because of all this publicity, it's really, there's been a lot of negativity, but... There's also not many Florida fans. Well, for the Habs game, I would say it was like 50-50. And okay. the Leafs fans were just going at us, especially the last game they played back in April. It was 7-1. So we had it coming for us. Yeah, that's awesome. So how, how long have you been a hockey fan? Uh, is this something that your dad has kind of uh, really helped grow your love for the game of hockey and the hatred of Leafs? Or how long does uh, your hockey story go back? Um, we've been going to Leafs games for as long as I can remember. And okay. then I started out as just a Habs fan and I used to be a hockey goalie. So I really admire nice. Carey Price. And then yep. just over the years, learned to hate the Leafs. <laughs> yeah. Ro- Ross and I are both goalies. We always call us a hashtag goalie friendly show. So we're happy you're a goalie as well. We need We need as many as we can get here. So are you doing this in any other arenas or is it strictly for the fans in Toronto to get to see a little bit of hatred to, directed towards them? Um, strictly in Toronto. I have done it like when Leafs would play in Montreal. I've traveled up there for a couple games. And then ideally I'd want to go to a Senators game when yes. Toronto's playing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because and that's good because unfortunately yeah. the Leafs take over the CTC when yeah. they play. So to have another Sens jersey in there, but what uh, from what you've seen of the Florida Panthers so far, what makes you think that they're going to put up a good fight up against the Leafs in this series? Like connecting and their shots, like especially uh, Kachuk, that's been yeah. amazing. And like seeing how they beat Boston, that was so impressive. And yeah. I thought it would have been Boston for sure because I had my Boston jersey ready. I was like, okay, <laughs> <laughs> at least there'll be other Boston fans there. But right. I th- I think they could like take it all the way because Leafs, although Leafs have the best odds, they've had the best odds in the past and they couldn't even get past round one. So <laughs> who knows? Yeah. So how many other Florida Panthers fans? Final question for me, and we really appreciate your time, Danny. This is such a fun topic. And, and obviously uh, we're excited to see you in the crowd tonight, hopefully cheering for a lot of goals. Or were there any other Panthers fans that you were able to, you know, high five or say, go Panthers, go? Is that what they say? Go Cat. <laughs> I saw one other one. That's all. Not your Travis. dad, though. No. My <laughs> okay. dad was to me, and then two sections over, there was another fan sitting with someone in a Pittsburgh jersey. So I'm not sure what's going on there, but. Nice. So they're, they're, they're just making it clear they are not Leafs fans. <laughs> not necessarily yeah. uh, Panthers fans, but not Leafs fans. Love that. A uh, final question for me is keep doing it. Keep doing what you're doing. We It's not even a question. It's just uh, as uh, Leafs haters, any way we can kind of troll Leafs fans and get them a little agitated. Like the amount of Leafs fans, and I know you mentioned they've been mostly nice to you at games, which is good to hear, but the amount of Leafs fans online that are getting upset about this is music to our ears. So for that, we thank you. Stick taps to Danny for joining us. Really fun conversation with her. You can tell she's a little shy. She's not expecting the media. She just wants to go have some fun chirping the Leafs. Who doesn't want to do that? Very relatable, very fun. Yes. So. Uh, you'll see her on TV tonight with her old man. A little father-daughter bonding time. Never hurt, Pilsy. That was a fun one. Yeah, absolutely. And I just, like, the Leafs fans that are sour about this are so annoying. Like, how many thousands of Leafs fans come to Ottawa and Montreal and Buffalo games? And, Hoover, Edmund, yeah, Calgary, exactly. Vegas, Florida, Tampa, L.A., Anaheim, like, everywhere. You can't get rid of them. They're rodents. Yeah, so like for them to be up up in arms about two people that are doing this and have season tickets there, like just it's not that serious. Just calm down. You know who else hates the Toronto Maple Leafs? Who? Mark Borowiecki. 
Yes. I would imagine. Now, Mark Borbietsky has announced his retirement from the National Hockey League. He did so in a very, very nice social media post on Instagram. He just went on TSN 1200. I'm going to listen to that right when we get off. But Steve Lloyd had just retweeted it. He's obviously the host of, of that show. He says that Boro will be moving back to Ottawa this summer and wants to stay in the game and pay it forward to young players. Like, this is a slam dunk for the new owners. Get Mark Borbietsky in as a development. I feel like he'd be a good strength and conditioning coach, man, the way this guy took care of himself. Absolutely. And Ross, they could make do on their promise of Mark Borietsky, Senator for life. He just had a retirement home in Nashville for a few years. Yeah. I mean, as one does, it happens. Um, should have been a Senator for life, by the way, like they replaced him with Braden Coburn and yeah. Ron Ainsey was in the mix. Like, there was no reason from a competitive hockey standpoint to lowball Mark Borbietsky for what? For what? No, there really wasn't. And he was coming off a career high in points. And you're like, now's the time. Now's the time. Now I understand, obviously, that allowed him to get a bigger contract, which, hey. Credit him. He made $4 million the last two years. Yeah, get get the bag. And that's in Nashville, a tax-friendly state. So that's also uh, pretty awesome. So you can't blame him there. But – I think it would be amazing for him to come back and some sort of developmental role because the key thing there is, Ross, is you want guys in development roles that have unique experiences. And the thing with Boro is he had to scratch and claw and punch and take punches and eat pucks for his whole career. And that's what he thought he needed to do which may have been the case. Like that probably is what he had to do to stay up here. But then one day he's like, you know what? I'm sick of this. Like my body is falling apart here. I put my blood, sweat and tears on the ice for this team. I want to change my game. I want to be a bit more of a puck moving guy. I want to help out offensively a little bit more. I'm not going to be fighting every chance I get. I'm not just a goon. I know I have more to offer. And then he goes out and has a career high in points. Like, I just think it's so valuable to have a guy that has his experience and mindset and that not only is a good guy in the locker room and on the ice, Ross, but a grade A example of what it's like to be a good citizen in the community. I mean, he was going to uh, pride parades and doing stuff like that before it was cool or before it was mandatory by teams and they needed guys out there. Like, that's just his beliefs. He always cared about the community. So I think like you mentioned, slam dunk to have Boro back on this team, back in this franchise in the developmental role. The slam dunk, take it to the bank. Any role this guy wants, safe of maybe head coach, I, I put this guy <laughs> in the mix. I think that his people skills are unmatched. He obviously was a, a diehard competitor. And I think it was Caleb uh, Smith that pointed out on Twitter, like he was the poster boy of having to fight after clean hits. Where it's yep. like, How many times did he just flat out kill guys clean and then have to fight and like that wasn't his thing like he probably took a lot of punches he didn't really need to at the end of the day and at one point he's like enough's enough i'm just not gonna do it and then he got jumped a couple times and it's like where do you draw the line it's kind of you know uh faint like faint in a way and unfortunately his his career i believe and maybe he was gonna hang him up anyways but it really felt like that injury he suffered earlier this year where they needed yeah. to get the stretcher out for him and um that was a really scary incident was kind of the the last thing where he probably looked at this and his family's growing. I believe he just had another kid. And it's like, you know what? He's made his money. I think he's building a home from scratch in in, in near Ottawa or in his his hometown area. I don't know if it's Smith Falls or wherever. And uh and good on him, man. He, he's he's had a hell of a career. Lots to be proud of. And in his Instagram post, he said that early in his career, somebody told him who played for a long okay. time that it, it's about how you're remembered off the ice that counts. Now, without saying it, like that was Alfie, hundred percent. No, probably, yeah. Like Alfie or Neeler, that, that's such a Chris Neal thing to say too. At the same time, maybe even Chris Phillips. Like the Senators, kind of old guard back then when he came in the league in 2011, 2012, kind of around the time. Um, actually, Boro, by the way, Calder Cup champion with the Binghamton Senators, yes. 2011, yep. right? So he came into the to the Sens after that. The real shame about Boro's time in Ottawa is that he actually. I don't, I don't know if this comes up a whole lot, and he was playing in a depth role, but he only got to play the first two games of the 2017 playoff run. He got injured and never made it back into the lineup. 
the Sens were icing like was it was it Freddie Clayson or Ben Harper on the third pair? That was only because. They had Boro on on the injured list. I think it was a knee or something uh, in that Boston series. So that's the only unfortunate part. But man, what a what a warrior and what a career for him. And um, we're we're talking to Meth, trying to get him on the show here. We'll see if we can make that happen in the next little while. I'm really glad he went on 1200 right away, though. I'm excited to hear that. And yeah, just he's a very I think Pilsy in a, in a day and age where these athletes kind of feel bigger than ever with their social media presence with this and that he feels like a very relatable NHLer, you know, like a kind of guy that you could have a pint with and, and shoot the breeze S- similar with meth. Like I guess they're just bred differently here in, in the nation's capital. Absolutely. Yeah. And I forget, I don't have the encyclopedia brain that you do Ross, but when I think about Boro, I was at a Sens game in Buffalo and it was near the end of the season. And I'll never forget this game because he was just putting it all on the line. Like the Sens were miles out of the playoffs. Like this, it was a meaningless game. And he must have blocked eight shots. He uh, blocked a shot that hit him in the face, I believe. And he had to leave the game, get stitched up. He comes back, blocks more shots. And I think he might have even got a goal in that game or something. Like it was just incredible to see that like there was no quit in this guy's mind. And he was willing to do whatever it took to help his team win, even in meaningless games. So just an absolute legend. Boro Cop, we, we always treasure that he was an Ottawa Senator. I forgot. I should have worn. I have the Boro Cop shirt in there somewhere. True, yep. After he uh, he saved a, a purse in Vancouver from a, from a robber, threw him right off the bike. Mark Korvietsky, <laughs> 375 of his 458 NHL games were played with the Ottawa Senators. He's fourth in franchise history in penalty minutes, Philzy. That doesn't surprise me, actually. Okay, trivia. Who are the top three? Two should be so easy. One, I think, is a little bit less obvious, but I think you might be able to get all of them. Neil? Neil has over triple the next guy. Over 25. Um, I'm going to say Phillips, just because he played so many games. Number two? Yeah. Mike Fisher, three? No, Fisher's number eight on this list. But he's kind of a Mike Fisher light, if I may say so myself. Huh, I don't know. Zach Smith. Oh, Smitty, nice. Okay, yeah, yeah, that makes Zach sense. Smith, and then Denny Vial uh, closes out the <laughs> top five. Funny with Denny Hell Vial yeah. is, uh, so here's games played. Chris Neal, 1,026. Chris Phillips, 1,179. Zach Smith, 612. Mark Borowiecki, 375. Denny Vial, 176. And he had 625 penalty minutes. He got his work done, that's for sure. He certainly did. Pims per minute of ice time is up the roof, as Guy Boucher would say, uh, in terms of that. Now, if we go by hits in Sens history, Mark Borowiecki is second all time. Behind? Come on. Chris Neal. Thank you. I was taking a sip of my water there for people listening on audio. Yeah, that was not a pause thinking about it. It's not going to be for much longer, though. Brady Kachuk's only 300 hits behind, and the way he slams bought, not going to be long there. And then if we go by blocked shots, Mark Borowiecki's fifth. Let's end the show with the last piece of trivia, Pilsy. Who are the top five in blocked shots in Sens franchise history? Um, Boro is fifth. Funny enough, Thomas Shabbat's in sixth. Wow. Uh, again, I'll go Phillips has to be up there, just games played. Number one. Yeah. Uh, I want to say Volchenkov, but he didn't play enough games to get up there, right? Number two. Nice, nice. Volchenkov, 428 games with Ottawa, 1,023 blocks. That dude eats pucks for breakfast. Um it might surprise you a little bit. And I'll tell you a little hint. They're both teammates of Boro at one point or another. Okay, I'll say Smitty too. No, no, all defensemen. That's my other hint. Is Meth up there? No, Meth's eighth. Okay, okay. Yeah. Not Carl. Carlson's number three. Okay, all right, all right. I'm tapping out there. Thank God, and not Carlson. So I don't know if we count those for you or against you. Because you say the name, but you're like, it's not him. <laughs> that's a little. That's a little trick of the trivia trade, Ross. <laughs> I, I've put you. You were an experienced trivia player, though. I really. I've gotten better too. I've. Uh, I've really improved on that. Okay, I'm tapping out there though. For oh, the uh, last trade. hint. This guy's still playing in the playoffs. Come on, that's easy. Cece. Cody Cece is number four. Wow. There we go. 
Let's go. All right, Pilsy, final thoughts from you? Uh, he's. I'm pretty sure he wears number five, actually, Ross. <laughs> uh, final thoughts for me is it's always fun to have Leafs haters uh, in the mix. So thank you, Danny, to join the show. And game two tonight, I can't wait to see how badly Matthew Kachuk makes this team squirm. Like they, they, they're not going to be able to handle him throughout if if they go seven games. I'm I'm all over the Florida Panthers tonight. Hell Plus yeah. 60. Come on. Love it. Come on. Let's do that. My final thoughts. Congratulations to Carson Latimer. Congratulations yes. to Zach Ostapchuk and the Winnipeg Ice. My Winnipeg Ice for advancing yeah. in a sweep to the finals of Huge. the Western Hockey League. Carson Latimer. Oh, book it, buddy. What a sick feed right through the slot. Easy little tap in. He, and uh, that's the game winning goal in the series clinching game. So they're on to the final. They will either play against Seattle or Kamloops, but they're going to have to wait. This is a rest versus rust debate. That series 2 1 out west. They're going to beat each other silly. And then you'll have the final start. But WHL is a little different, right? Because they go weeks without playing where it's like Monday to Friday they don't play. So I don't think we're going to have to deal with it that much. But man, this series, if it's Brad Lambert and the Seattle Thunderbirds against Winnipeg, that barn, I mean, all 10 seats of them, they're going to be filled. They might even fill 12 people in there. Uh, But no, great job for the two Sens prospects. And uh, our boy Ben out in Saskatchewan went to game three and said both of them were flying out yes. there. So love to see that. Obviously, I was there last Friday in Winnipeg for game two. A staff chuck at a, at a shorthanded penalty shot goal. Uh, that kid's a stud. So fired up for that. Fired up for the future of the team and the franchise as well. Snoop Dogg or Ryan Reynolds? Pinch yourself, Sens fans. One of those guys, in all likelihood, will be a part owner of your Ottawa Senators. We'll be here every step of the way to bring the vibes, analysis, trivia, and interviews along the way. For today, we say goodbye. We'll get back to our um, our exit interviews tomorrow. Well, I'm sure we'll have I'm sure we'll have something new tomorrow in the world of the Sense Sale that's moving a hundred miles a minute. So stay tuned for that and more. For Brandon Pillar, I'm Ross Levitan. This has been the Locked On Senators Podcast. Your team every day. <laughs>